One of the biggest challenges I've seen with so far is related to, to your point, some of these ISVs started as startups um, and then, you know, gained traction in their market and then went and did acquisitions. Um, and so it is sort of this evolution, right, of what they're delivering to their customer over time. Welcome to another episode of Data Strategy Unravel. I'm your host, Kendra Reed, Principal Data Strategy Tech Specialist here at AWS. And today we're going to talk about data strategy and ISVs. Now, ISVs are a unique type of industry. They operate a little bit differently than your typical enterprise organizations. And as such, these industries as well could also benefit from a data strategy. And to really help us drive this conversation, I have our resident expert with ISVs here, Karen Hensley. Hey, Karen, how you doing? I'm doing great. That's great to hear. How about you introduce yourself and tell the viewers where you're dialing in from? So uh, I am a principal data strategist at AWS. Um, I am located in North Phoenix area, so right now I uh, probably have the best weather as <laughs> out of anybody as I was in the Northeast this, earlier this week. I'm so happy to be home, but uh, part of what I do at AWS is give thought leadership um, to Amazon Web Services ISVs on helping them align culture, people, process, and technology to drive business outcomes with data analytics, AI, and ML technologies. Um, I have an undergraduate degree in psychology, so <clears throat> that comes in quite handy uh, when I'm working with a lot of these ISVs, as well as a master's of science degree in um, analytics from Villanova. Um, and I really help these customers develop their data strategy and focus on innovating with data and insights to drive their ISV financial and business outcomes, like driving top line revenue or optimizing operations costs. Um, or, you know, adding new experiences into their solutions they, they deliver to their end customers. Um, I've been in the data space for over 25 years. Uh, I've held leadership roles in finance, marketing, product management, sales engineering, business development, um, both with large software technology companies and with some AI and ML startups. So it's definitely in the, the product management engineering side that I find a lot of that experience is helpful with working with our uh, ISVs at AWS. Wow. I can imagine when you graduated with a psychology degree that you didn't imagine yourself working in this space, working with these type of companies that you do today. People are the hard part, friend. Technology is <laughs> easy. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So how about we start off with explaining to our viewers here exactly what a ISV is? So at ISV, they are independent software vendors, um, and they leverage our underlying cloud technologies. And it's not just infrastructure, but it's also our database services, our analytics services, AI and ML, um, and everything surrounding that in order to deliver applications. Um, and so these ISVs deliver new software solutions to their customers and their users. Um, and you know these software providers i think what's really interesting about them is that they inherently have data as part of their solution um, often this data is quite transactional in nature though related to solving for a specific b2b or b2c kind of workflow or, or processing issue um, so they have these capabilities um, and these experiences that they deliver that a lot of times cross, you know, finance, sales, IT, other operations, or often uh, they also have these industry specific solutions or segments of end users um, that they specialize in as they're delivering the, the software and workflows that they have. Thank you for the information there. And I think one point to make there is that ISVs aren't just startups, right? They could be larger organizations uh, that are considered also a ISV. Right. Yeah, so I mean, one of the biggest challenges I've seen with so far is related to, to your point, some of these ISVs started as startups um, and then, you know, gained traction in their market and then went and did acquisitions. Um, and so it is sort of this evolution, right, of what they're delivering to their customer over time. And one of the biggest challenges I've seen is that because of that, their product portfolio has expanded kind of in this very like decentralized engineering organization. So, you know, many small teams, which is great, that are able to move quickly and or they make these acquisitions and they keep those teams um, moving <clears throat> in the same direction in order to maximize that market opportunity. Um, 
And so, you know, the other thing we've seen too is that even if there aren't acquisitions, they again tend to have these engineering teams and product management teams as encapsulated together to, to move faster, to take product to market faster. Um, and so a lot of times as part of this, they're advancing their specific application that they're focused on or set of capabilities, um, but that's within a very loosely defined kind of platform or suite where there have been kind of point to point integrations, but the underlying architectures can be very different, right? Um, and so one of to kind of counteract that challenge and be able to leverage data across these various software solutions, even though they may be built on very different architectures without having to like replatform everything into the cloud, which, hey, if they re want to replatform, I'm all for that with AWS. But, you know, one of the things that we've seen successful ISVs do is, you know, establish a, a modern data community that allows the producers from engineering, product management, and across the lines of business or products to deliver, you know, bring that data into an internal marketplace or community in order to have governed, cleansed quality data products that can then be discovered and accessed by consumers in, in other products, line of business teams or other functions in the company so that the data in and of itself is now uh, uh, available, again, contributed by these producers, but available to the consumers to then use it within other products or look at, you know, new solutions, data insights, uh, you know, machine learning insights that might come about even generative AI that can then be leveraged within another product that may not be their own. That's a great point, Karen, about modern data community concept and how ISVs can really leverage that to really bring forth that monetization capabilities that they may be looking to leverage. And for those that are viewing this, this video here, we also have a video on modern data community and exactly what that means. Feel free to check that in the playlist. Uh, but as we can continue with this conversation, Karen, can you talk a little bit more specifically around the technology challenges that these companies typically face? Well, you know, as I said previously, you know, often the technology decisions were uh, made historically in support of specific capabilities or as a completely independent software organization, you know, that got acquired by someone else. Um, and so the feature need, features that are needed for one application may not be applied to other applications in the portfolio. And as I said, from a, a, a structural architectural perspective, the data is generated and stored in very different databases, different structures. Um, and when married with the lack of common data models, so that's the other challenge again. The <laughs> so not only are the, you know, the, the data stores uh, different, but then there was no real, you know, early rationalization or, or vision as to how a data model might be put together. And so, you know, the, the data silos, which are difficult to rationalize and integrate as well. Um, and, you know, so being able to do this is so important, though, as we think about uh, a lot of what these various product teams are trying to do within the ISV, which is more cross-sell and upsell. That's definitely one of those use cases that I see quite often. So embedding um, new capabilities, yes, leveraging insights, but also dovetail into the other software solutions. Um, and so, you know, being able to rationalize this data um, <clears throat> using, you know, machine learning, artificial intelligence, uh, data, data governance as code in order to govern it appropriately between producers and consumers is really important. Um, and so I see this as, you know, definitely a, a technology challenge, but solving for it by landing that data both structured and unstructured in a common data lake or even in a data mesh, which might include multiple data lakes. Um, and then using AI and ML to surface insights across customer segments and then deploying those insights out to customers using something like embedded analytics. And at AWS, we have QuickSight, which has embedded generative BI now um, using Amazon Q. So, you know, this is um, one of the, the challenges that we see, but what we see organizations doing to be successful are really these things, bringing that data together, um, sharing it, <clears throat> and then leveraging, you know, AWS services in order to create new um, and interesting insights that create that delightful customer experience. Wow. Thanks for providing that insightful information on how these ISVs can really start to tackle those tech challenges as well that they may be facing. Um, I know that we really just only scratched the surface when we start thinking about data strategy and ISVs, but I want to take the time to say thank you, Karen, for 
joining us today and providing us with this insightful information. And we definitely want to have you back to dive deeper on that monetization of data uh, with ISVs or really monetization in general uh, and how the, a lot of organizations can start to leverage that in order to become more profitable. Uh, for those that are watching our video today, feel free to check the links below in the description to learn more information about what we discussed today, as well as check our playlist. You know, we have other videos out there around that, like I mentioned before, modern data community concepts, as well as some other useful information when it comes to overall data strategy. Again, thanks, Karen, for joining, and thank you all for watching. Hope to see you again soon in the next Data Strategy Unraveled video.